My name is Jacob Reese, and this is my story. At the age of 21, I left my hometown of Reeb in Denmark. The year was 1870. I was a carpenter, but jobs were few. My relationship with my girlfriend, Elizabeth, had ended as well. I decided to leave Denmark and make the journey to America to find work and begin a new life. Ah, the sight of Lady Liberty as we pulled into the New York Harbor. We were all in awe as we gazed at this symbol of America, welcoming us with open arms. I dreamed of coming to America. I heard the streets would be paved with gold. I soon found out downtown New York was a sea of humanity, or maybe it was a sea of inhumanity. The streets weren't paved with gold. They were filled with thousands of people making a living, selling their goods and talking in many different languages. There were Italians, Jews, Irish, Germans, some Danes even. They mostly kept with their own kind. I had little money in my pocket, and it was hard to find work as a carpenter. I found myself working odd jobs here and there, and spent my nights sleeping on the streets or in police lodging houses begging for food. The conditions in these places were terrible, and I promised myself that I would find a way to shut them down. My first few years in New York were not pleasant, to say the least. More than several years passed, and as luck would have it, I found a job as a police reporter for the New York Tribune. Little did I know that my work as a reporter would allow me to witness firsthand the crime and poor conditions that existed in the slums of this great city. I began to write about the thousands of people living in the small section of New York known as the Five Corners. Makeshift housing sprang up and people lived in tight quarters, otherwise known as tenements or railroad apartments. Maybe ten people lived in one apartment. No wonder there were many illnesses that spread like wildfire and ended up causing many young children and elderly to die. I discovered firsthand the poverty that existed. Many of these new immigrants had no jobs. They came to America just as I had, seeking work and the opportunity to make a better life for themselves and their families. They found neither. Sometimes I wondered if they would have been better off not coming to America at all. It was particularly heart-wrenching to see children huddled together trying to sleep on a steel grate that possibly brought heat to their cold bodies. I thought there must be a better way to shed light on these horrific living conditions. It was the era of social reforms, wasn't it? Though my writing told of the bad conditions that existed in these slums, I needed another way to describe it. I tried sketching, but I wasn't good at it. Within a short period of time, I grew interested in photography. I practically taught myself how to use the camera, which was a relatively new invention at the time. And then I learned how to use flash photography. I began to take pictures at night, which showed the seedy side of the slums of New York. The public was now able to see what life was like inside a crowded tenement apartment. How an Italian immigrant had to care for her children and at the same time work at scrubbing floors where lodgers slept at night with all of their belongings in one small room, where the cobbler tried to eke out a living, where a homeless person spent the day in his yard to pass the time. I found that traditions continued. The Sabbath was observed even in the confines of a coal cellar. And let's not forget about crime. At night I was fearful walking through the alleyways. You never knew what was going to happen. It was wise to stay in at night and not wander around the slums. Street crooks were everywhere and ready to pounce on unsuspecting victims. I felt despair as I snapped away with my camera, but I knew I had to tell the story of what life was really like in the slums. My words weren't enough. Isn't it true that a picture is worth a thousand words? Small children needed to be protected in the factories in which they worked or in the coal cellars. Though I had written numerous newspaper stories and magazine articles describing the struggles of the city's poor at work and at home, I decided to write a longer expose on the subject. My book, How the Other Half Lives, was published in 1890. It became a hit and influenced a whole generation of reformers to take a stand and make a change in housing conditions as well as to address the high crime rates. I even became friends with Teddy Roosevelt. You know him. He was our 26th president. Well, before he became president of the United States, he was president of the Board of Commissioners of the New York City Police Department. 
Together we helped uncover mismanagement in the police department. I am proud to say that because of my investigative reporting, we were able to clear away the tenements and find suitable housing for thousands of immigrants. We were able to build parks for the public to enjoy and we helped clean up New York's water system. Looking back on all of this, I never imagined that a boy from Denmark would have made such a mark on social reforms in America, or that I would come to be known as a pioneer in flash photography. I am so glad that I learned firsthand what it was to be poor and desperate. It only made me want to work harder to change similar circumstances for others. Oh, I forgot to mention that I did marry Elizabeth, my old girlfriend from Denmark. We lived happily ever after in New York City. As I said in my book, New York is, I firmly believe, the most charitable city in the world. Nowhere is there so eager a readiness to help when it is known that help is worthily wanted.